Hello, Acron fans, and welcome to the last exhibition match between Chris and Perlox on Island. This is game three of the three that they played in a row on Island. Chris is once again going for CISO, and Perlox is going for Grekim, and I am Shadow 33 your commentator. So, as I said, both players have chosen their race, and Chris went for CISO last game. He went for Vecchio in the first game. Didn't work out well for him. CISO in last game worked out okay, but he did not take advantage of CISO's strengths as well as he could have. Did not expand as well as he could have. He had tons of resources, and he managed to tear apart Perlox's economy by destroying his L RPs in his main base after Perlox had triad walked his his well triad walked away to the south base, basically punishing Perlox for doing that triad walk. Very clever strategy, but didn't capitalize on it, which was a real shame. And now Perlox. It looks like, oh, wow, very quickly, Chris is sending a Marine to the south base. Perlox has very often been sending units to the south base. Actually, not just south base, south base first, and then scouting around from there. So double-checking to make sure that Perlox does not end up in the south base, because Perlox has been taking the south base in every game at this point. He's tried walked to that base, and that's been how he's been able to win against Chris. The first game he did it, and he's actually doing this game as well. First game he did it, and it, oh no, he's tried walking to the north base. Clever. Very clever, because Chris, of course, is expecting the south base, and Perlox out mind gaming him going to the north base. We'll see how this actually works out, but. Let's see, the special ops has met up with the Arcticus in the present at the 130 mark, and Chris about half a minute down from here. I gotta point out that Chris is actually spending a lot less time in the present, which is interesting to show. He was spending a lot more time in the present in the first couple games, and now he is, seems to be more comfortable operating in the past. And Perlox, of course, is, like I said, going towards the north as opposed to the south. He is still tried walking, though, so he's still vulnerable. His main base is still vulnerable, but no, he is... He's actually learned from his mistakes, keeping an Octo ready, not turning into an RP, keeping it ready in case of special op attacks. Very good idea. There will be a special ops and then a Marine coming in, so that might be a problem. Though if he's clever, he'll progen the Octo in order to keep it alive, like to regenerate its health, because progenerating units regenerate health. And then from there, he'll be able to fight off the special ops and then the marine afterwards. So very clever. Perlox is doing a lot of things right, making sure he's not giving Chris too much room to learn from his mistakes. However, the big mistake that Chris made last game was not getting up economy, not expanding enough, and not building enough production capacity when he had the money he could use to actually pay for everything. And now the special ops is dealing a lot of damage, and Chris... Actually, once again, hanging on the present. Not fast running past the present, interestingly enough. And the Special Ops... Sorry, the Marine is actually coming in first before the Special Ops. Special Ops distracted by the Arcticus. So the Marine is going to be destroyed by that Octo. Like I said, very clever idea by Perlox to keep that Octo there instead of turning into an RP. Yeah, one less RP, but man, that saving his base will keep all of his RPs alive. I mean, last time he was, like I said, terribly punished for it, and he was just lucky he didn't lose the whole game as a result. Now... Given that Chris has scouted around the south before coming to the main base, and seeing that there's an Octo in the main base, he's likely to be thinking that, hopefully, I mean, he'll be thinking that Perlox is in the north base. It stands to reason that Perlox would be in the north base, or one of the corner bases, but he already knows that the southwest base isn't there, so either the northwest or north base, likely. So I'm going to guess that Perlox is going to have to try to defend these bases pretty soon. Chris is likely to be attacking them. I don't know if Chris is actually going to be attacking them. He hasn't shown if he's going to attack them yet, but... That would be the best place to attack. That would be, given what he knows, the place where Perlox is most likely to be. Given he knows that Perlox enjoys going towards the North or South expansion, and given that the South expansion has not been taken, very clearly not been taken, and the Triad is out of the main base, which means that the Triad, I mean, unless he missed it and he didn't intercept the Triad, which is a valid thing that may have happened, but really, it's safe to assume, and we know, we know that it's in the North, and it'd be safe to assume it's in the North, too. Since he did not see it, and at this point, as you can see, time it takes to get to the north base that the marine would have spotted the triad if the triad was in the south base. So very good to know on this map that you can spot this stuff out. And the octo staying alive, not going into progen mode, and actually Perlox did turn into an RP. This RP was that octo. So the special ops will be able to deal damage. Or no, not special ops, marine. The marine coming in will be able to deal damage and actually damage these RPs meaningfully. So Chris still able to punish Perlox. Perlox did not keep their octo up long enough as a defense on his main base. So Chris still a bit of harass the main base, still a bit of punish, and, oh, he's not in the present right now. And he's not actually building up his own base, though. He's not really focusing on it. He is sending his special ops over to the north base. He, yep, like I said, he stands to reason, will be attacking that base. So he knows about the Marine, however, being distracted by the Arcticus. 
rather unfortunate because that marine, like I said, is the best thing to deal damage in the main base. It would be able to harass it, would be able to stop Perlox from getting a lot of money. But right now he's not doing that. And Gris is now building, he is at the 249 mark building's expansions. He, well, building more RPs in an expansion. Very good idea. He still could use more production capacity, but at the very least he is building more RPs early on. So he's learning that much. And Special Ops coming in to the north base, spots the north base, so now Chris knows for sure that Prolox is in the north. The Special Ops will die to the Octo, but it'll at least give him the information he needs in order to have a chance of winning the game. And here we have the Marine. The Ar Arcticus has gone past the Marine. The Marine is not actually going towards the main base to harass it anymore. Bit surprising. Chris really should do that, but he hasn't so far. And the Octo has gone to progen mode. So it looks like Prolox probably this doesn't ultimately happen. Perlo Perlox actually made sure that the Octo was attacking before. Yeah, so what Perlox sees, he's slightly behind Chris, so Perlox, what he sees is actually more likely to be true, ultimately. Another Faro coming in, so an Arcticus being built in this base, and another Faro coming in to Progen, help out, build more RPs. So right now, Perlox has a bit of an RP advantage, but it's not particularly large. It's actually about even. So both players are about resource parity, but Chris, like I said, has more potential to expand, and he is getting some ATHCs and mechs as well to harass. Wow, Perlock starting out with very early Octopods and some early Seppi, so trying to prepare for any assault that doesn't involve him getting air units, a very good idea to do. Especially since, I mean, okay, he needs Faros, that's one thing he needs though, he is getting Seppi, he's getting Faros, okay good, he's getting Faros and Seppis and Octopods, getting a second reef as well, so this main base, well this second new main base, the north base, is going to be very difficult to harass for Chris. I'm sure Chris will try, and back when Chris is, he actually does have his ATHC built up. He is attacking the Ar oh, his mech's attacking the Articus, his ATHC is attack moving, but will be distracted by the Articus. Perlux has been showing, he knows very well how to scout with an Articus. Useful for scouting, also useful for distraction, stopping your opponents from getting their forces into your base when they just attack move. They need to, they need to cue a move followed by an attack move in order to be successful in attacking you. Very clever little strategy. Anyway, Marine is building another factory, so there's gonna be two factories now and more RPs being built by the back of it. So the Articus, like I said, this Articus is doing a great job of scouting. Perlox really knows his Articus scouting technique, or at least has been developing his Articus scouting technique quite well. Speaking of Articus, his second Articus has the two Faros, two Seppis, and two Octopods linked up. Octo is going towards the northwest base, so Perlox out expanding Chris at this point. Rather surprising, Chris has the resources to out expand Perlox, but he's not taking advantage of them. He also has the troops to actually harass Perlox away from dealing any real significant damage. And he's getting macro so he's likely to get Mar tanks after this, use that, and he will be able to tear through this base without much problem. Though, of course, Perlox has advanced structures, he could easily get a Spire. I'm, he doesn't have a Spire when Chris is, but when Perlox is. No, Perlox is about half a minute down from Chris at the 505 mark, he does not have a Spire yet. He's also near the unplayable pass, so he can only issue it one order at a time. Jumping forward about 30 seconds or so, he doesn't have. He still has no Spire, he is focusing on these ground units, he's focusing on lower tech units, and Chris is getting machinery, probably going to be getting Tornados along with the Martanx, possibly get Frigus as well. Not harassing, interestingly enough, not sending the ATHCs out to harass. I'm surprised at this, maybe he's not paying attention to it, but yeah, he really should be sending those ATHCs out. The Marine is being sent out there, and here we are. He has jumped back a bit where the ATHC actually is harassing, and no, he has decided to go against it, probably did actually harass, and then... Wasn't able to, no, he is going in, he is attacking, and it is going to be unsuccessful. Octopods, very effective against ATHCs with Faro detection. No real way to get through that without Martanks, and Chris is not going for Martanks yet. I'm very surprised he isn't building up anything, honestly. He really should be building up stuff. Anything. Really anything. Just build things. He has tons of resources to do so. And Prolox is getting weapons alongside, well, alongside advanced structures, so he's going straight for weapons, going to be able to fire off plasma cruise missiles and just deal a ton of damage to Chris's base. Well, Chris's unit is more than his base. While also sending out his Octopods, Oct Faros, and Seppis towards Chris's base, they will be distracted by the Macrofab. They are actually attacking towards the southeast base, interestingly enough. And Chris does not have any harassment forces coming in, but he does have a proxy factory right next to... Well, not a proxy factory, a factory right next to Prolox's north base. And the Macrofab is in fact distracting one of the Octopods, but the other units are going straight past it. The Faros and Seppies are going straight past it towards the southeast expansion, which is completely useless unless he's trying to expand there. If Perlox is trying to expand there, that's great, but I don't know if he's actually trying to do that. And a dome being built up for... A dome being built up for Perlox to help attack. Martank damaging one of the Octopods, but not far enough away. The dome is still able to destroy it. 
No, they actually destroyed each other. So, it was a draw. Both units died. Well, it's a bit of a shame, but... Martank completely coming out even against that far... Against that dome. Octobots coming down towards southeast base. Nothing is there, but the units are still in a better position to attack. Martank's managing to hold off the attack of Perlox. But a minute down from here, it looks like he's going to be likely changing around how this attack works. And the Martank's able to destroy the factory. The mech helping out against the dome, and the dome will not be able to win against the Martank. The Martank... Actually, this time around, we'll be able to destroy the dome completely. But a far pod and a pod coming in, and Perlox has Lego class, so he could use us to build off the Legos. I don't know if he's going to do that, but he could if he wanted to. Actually, one fun thing that I did on an earlier version of this map, though it's not really possible now, is to have far pod and pod on one of the corners, and then build up a ton of units in the corner, like far Lego Seppi Legos in that corner, and attack from there, either the southeast or northeast corner. Anyway. My digression aside, the Plasma Cruise Missile is coming in, it will be corner-porting back, and Perlox... Oh, actually, here we go. So it is attacking on the blue time wave. Perlox is seeing the effects of that, and it actually... Ah, oh, here we are. The, there's the departure, and the arrival will be occurring further in the past, so we'll see that once the green time wave comes. But it will be heavily damaging these Martanks. These Martanks are... Com their lives are in complete jeopardy. We can pretty much assume that they are not going to be alive any longer. And at the same time, Tornados were going into this north base and doing nothing. So these Martanks, like I said, there's no reason to assume they're going to stay alive. They are all dead. The Macrofab will be fine. The Macrofab won't fall anytime soon. Tornado destroying the Seppi, but barely is... Chris is going back a little bit to monitor this attack. And he is being able to damage the Seppi somewhat. Far getting in the way, though, and the Tornado will go down before the Seppi is destroyed. The Seppi is staying alive. Farpod and Octopod and... All pod class units are in the main base, so if Perlox can make legal class units of whatever type he wants, they are in a triad at the 9 minute mark. And the damage has been dealt as well, so the green time will show that damage. Like I said, these Martanks are... at least half these Martanks are dead. Incidentally, Perlox has actually spent this time not really... No, not expanding anymore. He has all the expansions he had before, and Chris is also getting the expansions. The south, south of the map has been completely untapped this entire time. Though, that being said, there are Octas coming in from the north base towards the southwest expansion to build more RPs there. So Perlox is focusing on expansion. And, oh, interestingly enough, the, oh, the green time shows that there's no real change to the Mars that are there. And the mech appears to, no, it appears to be alive too. So the plasma cruise missile apparently didn't do as much damage as I thought it would. Interesting. Anyway, the Martanks, regardless, are being built up. They are coming in. We'll be able to deal a lot of damage once they are able to, and that being said, from the attack, a factory was destroyed, which made some Tornads no longer exist. And back in the north base as well, so, or northeast base, so Chris is doing a much better job building production capacity and setting up units that he needs. Like I said, he really does need to get detectors, he really does need to get frigates, because Perlox, this surprised he's not building Sepi Legos, though. I'm really surprised he's not building Sepi Legos. I, I would have expected a lot more Sepi Legos from this point. But, nope, he is not building them. At least not yet. He is getting another progen triad. And he is... Okay, is this a Seppi Legos? No, it is more base class units. He is going heavily for base class units. Not going for legal class units. I'm not sure what his motivation is here. I'm not sure if this is even correct, but... Yeah, he is not going for the legal class units he could be building. And now Chris is going for a Martank attack. Total assault with Martanks. No air units that are available unless the pod class D progen... Those Martanks will be able to just tear everything apart. And Chris is building more importers. He needs more production capacity to match up with this, but at least he's building importers to match up his economy. So he can build more production capacity if he wants to, but he isn't yet. And the Martanks coming around will be... Let's see, is there more Martanks coming in? More... Oh, heavy cruisers coming in. Okay, complete heavy cruisers coming in, and Perlox, his point in time, further down. He is... There we go. Faro Legos coming in. Building the Lego, Lego class along with Faro's. So Faro's and Faro is coming in, and this is about the time that the Martank Assault starts. Whoa. Oh, I see. Sorry. We What we're seeing is that the Chris's base was chronobombed. Perlox actually managed to chronobomb his base. Not the Martanks, though, but the base entirely. I was wondering when a chronobomb would happen, and for some reason we didn't see it. Anyway. Chris, his main base has been chronobombed, and we'll see all his buildings come in back into existence right now, and they will end up just damaging each other, and... Chrono Fragging. Don't worry about it, this won't end up actually being the state of affairs, ultimately, but... What will actually happen is this span of time here won't ever exist. So, from Burlock's point of view, we're seeing what's actually happening from this base. The Martanks are coming in, they are dealing some damage. 
But it looks like... No, I can't really tell if the Commander Martang is gone or not. And the Pod Class Triad is being destroyed quite quickly, but the Leo Class units that they built will be able to destroy the Martangs that were, that were built. And so Chris now has to deal with the fact that he has no production capacity at this point in time. Wow, two Chrono Bombs, wow. Okay, so the entire... his All his units, all his bases, everything, were Chrono Bombed, giving a lot of potential for Perlox. And Perlox now just Chrono putting back a ton of units, too. Oh, well, Chrono putting back the Far Oligos. So we will see... Or... Was he coming back to Far Legos? It's hard to tell. We do see Chris's units haven't been chrono ported forward, however, which, like I said, is going to have limited what he could do. So, that being said, there are still the heavy cruisers and Martanks coming in, so Chris will still have some defense to come in, but he won't be able to attack Furlox as well as he had before. And Seven Paws are now coming in, sorry, Seven Legos coming in at the 1341 mark. Perlox is about 10 seconds up from Chris. And Chris is actually... Now his units have come back into play. He does have defense turrets coming in here, but one of the Sibley Lugas got too close. However, Perlox is damaging Chris heavily in the past. Very, very, very heavily. I expect Chris to be looking back at this as soon as he gets the chance, but... Actually, you know what? I'm just going to look at this as an observer. And yes, here we have the Far Lugas coming in. And this was the Chrono Bomb we saw before. That destroyed the main base. The Fire Leo is coming in, destroying what they can, although one downside of this attack is that it is going to be damaging units that were actually, well, they're Chrono Forward forwards, so they don't exist at this point in time, but they exist further in the future. And yeah, these Martanks getting heavily damaged, so two of the Martanks being destroyed, the other three Martanks managing to continue along just fine. So this Red Time Wave is quite a big deal. That Red Time Wave is going to be changing a lot, but I'm not sure how much it's actually going to be changing. It looks like Perlox is going to still be at a massive advantage, and yes, he is... Whoa, he's keeping Sippy Ligo almost alive, well, barely alive, but he has a ton of base class units coming in to help support. His pod class tried, he only has two of the units left. The far pods still got destroyed, but like I said, this isn't past the red time, but this is actually further in the future when that first Martank attack happens, so we still see the effects of that. Now, Chris, on the other hand, is... Oh boy, he's going to be going for a heavy attack, going for a heavy last-ditch last assault, trying to just stop this... No, probably trying to stop the current board attack from happening in the first place. But it's all for nothing. The Faro Oligos managed to deal a ton of damage. Martanks still exist, but those macrofabs that were being used to build heavy cruisers do not. Martanks coming in, trying to destroy this base class assault, and doing a very good job destroying the base class units. Tearing them to shreds, actually, quite handily. But the Sepi Ligo here is going to be able to finish them off before they're able to do anything about it. Here's the all attack at one thing. The Martanks are not going to have much of a chance to deal with this. I'm going to try valiantly, but I don't see them getting out of this unscathed. Yeah, there's really no way that Chris can get out of this. His Martanx doing a valiant job damaging the Sippy Ligo. Actually, mentioning it deal quite a bit of damage to it, but unfortunately, they're slowing down. They're being destroyed, and Sippy Ligo dealing just as much damage as it was before. Martanx giving up on that and just going straight for the assault. Perlox about a minute down from here. Doesn't look too concerned about the Martanx, but he is probably concerned about... Well, maybe concerned about the Martanx a little bit, but there's not much to be concerned about, really. He, his Far Ligos are the only thing that well, they're the only thing that he needs, and he's already used them. And he can just mo he moved to the north, get rid of the Martanks, and that's it. Chris is dead. Chris is living on Borough Time, really. And once these Martanks die, there's nothing left of it. However, Chris has managed to deal a lot of... Oh, wow. Further in the future, Chris will manage to deal a lot of damage to Prolox's base, but Prolox is likely to be building up a ton of units to help defending us. This building up two Octoligos, not a bad idea. Although, Far Ligos would still be a better uh, option, but building up two Octoligos regardless. Martank is going towards that base. And the Far Leo is coming up to try to finish them off. So Chris doing what he can, but it's not going to be that much. The two Martanks coming in and will be harassed by the Far Leos, distracting them and leaving them open long enough. So the Martanks will be destroyed. Chris won't be able to do anything about it. And Perlox has just won. Chris has been defeated. He does have the Martanks when he is, though. So as far as he's concerned, he has the Martanks. Looks like he's trying to control them, make sure they just go past that Far Leo squad. But no, this Far Leo is going to destroy them. There is no way around this. And Chris has GG'd. So a much better game than the second game. That like, Chris could have expanded more, got more production capacity, but he did get a lot of production capacity in expansion, and he did lose to Perlox outplaying him temporarily rather than losing because he didn't play. He did not play as well as he could have, but he played a lot better than he did last game. That was that was a much better game. He used CISO better, and he used 
He expanded more effectively. He should have. He could have expanded even more from what he had, but he still used his expansion potential more than he had in the last game. He just if he continued to expand more and build up more. And yeah, scouting as Perlox is saying right here, scouting is a big thing. He didn't really know what Perlox is up to that entire time, and Perlox had a good idea of what Chris is up to or what Chris could be up to the entire game. That was the big thing. Chris simply was not prepared. Although, yeah, Perlox is pointing out because they found the base is a better game, but still, Chris wasn't as prepared as he could have been. He did not scout as well as he could have. He could have harassed more. He could have attacked more with the HSC just to spirit what was going on and see these forces coming in. And that's the thing. The Chrono Bombs were huge. Those Chrono Bombs and PCMs were a huge difference. Well, Chrono Bombs especially. So, well done from Perlox, and that was a really entertaining game. So, I hope you enjoyed that, and have a good day, everyone.